Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of Red Dead Redemption. If you guys are enjoying this series, do drop a like. Buy a current edition of the newspaper. Okay, let's see here. Williamson Gang um, Reign of Terror. Uh, in events that hark back to our state's not so distant and not too glorious past, gangs of thieves and killers in um, uh, is running amok across the western counties. Although New Austin has never been a place for the uh, faint of heart, nor a place that encourages uh, delicacy, law enforcement agencies are particularly worried about this new gang. Not since Dutch van der Linde's crew was operating up in West Elizabeth has a criminal group caused so much uh, 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 consternation. Um, uh, nor gained so much publicity. Although cattle rustling and robberies are unfortunately still common throughout our region, um, uh, despite uh, the spate of killings, fires, and burnings caused by Bill, Bill Williamson and his gang have shocked even the hardest and most robust of local residents. Williamson, a career criminal and a uh, reprobate uh, with a record of running back to reform school, is himself believed to have uh, once run in Vanderlyn's gang. Dutch Vanderlyn himself has not been seen nor heard from in several years. Despite claims of sightings, it's thought to have perished in a fire following a a uh, bungled uh, robbery in 1906. Uh, with railway companies and other business interests pushing local and federal government bodies to aid economic development and investment by reducing crime, it's clear that their action will be taken against this uh, latest gang attempting to live the American dream outside of the law. So, in this time period, there was railway companies and banks that would pay for a lot of private um, guards, and they would also a lot of times be responsible for the sheriff's salary. And so you could have some corruption also with that as well. If you have banks paying for law enforcement officials, that's why the Pinkertons, they were a private police force, were hired by a lot of these, um, you know, banks and, you know, train stations. Um, uh. Anything else here? People missing in Chola Springs, several residents of Armadillo uh, have gone missing for the past few months. Uh, that's gonna be a, um, a stranger mission that you encounter a little bit later on. Tobacco fights tuberculosis? Everywhere that fresh air, uh, 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 air abounds, um, a uh, man knows nothing of cough, cold, or lung inflammation. However, as man creates, um, cities and is herded into factories, sweatshops, mines, and mills, these soggy and unhygienic atmospheres spread the most deadly of pulmonary diseases, tuberculosis. Dr. Charles L. Helen says workers can disinfect themselves and protect against disease through regular smoking in the workplace. Yeah, um, the thing about this, guys, is even though this is, um, uh, this is an wonder tonic, um, uh, uh, from the East, doctors worried about future. So here in this, in this time period, you would have things like, you know, people promoting tonics, um, in the ads, and they wouldn't really have to, um, uh, uh, they wouldn't really have to prove that the stuff was, was healthy for you. And like, for example, you know, cigarettes, back then they had ads where they would say that, you know, you, you smoke cigarettes, you live to 100 years old. That actually did happen back then. Yeah. Bonnie's mission here. Mr. Marston, I've been hearing about your plans. Have you, Miss McFarland? Yes, from Lee Johnson. To settle here and build a life for yourself. I'm afraid those aren't my plans. See, I already have a life. Well, I had one and I'm trying to reclaim it. Or maybe what you could say is that I had two, and I'm trying to end one of them so the other can survive. You do so love to talk in riddles, Mr. Marston. Do you do that, I wonder, as a substitute for having anything interesting to say? Probably, Miss McFarland. Oh, call me Bonnie, you fool. <sighs> call me Bonnie. Miss McFarland. I'm married. I have a son. I had a daughter, but she died. Years before that, I rode in a gang. We robbed banks, trains, held people ransom. We killed people we didn't like. Bill Williamson was in that gang. Now, if I don't capture my former brother in arms, great harm will befall my family. Now, I don't suppose any of this is very interesting to you, but I hope it explains why I wasn't so eager to talk about it. No, I do understand. I had no idea. You poor man. Even in this new country, memories don't really fade. 
My father was an illiterate Scot born on the boat into New York. He never saw his homeland, but to hear him talk about it, you'd imagine he only ever ate haggis and wore a kilt. And he hated the English for what they had done to his great-grandparents that he'd never met. People don't forget. Nothing gets forgiven. That's true, especially when it comes to money. And you know, even now, after all his labors, my father's debts are still terrible. I worry every day about us losing the ranch. It would kill him. My father died when I was eight years old. His eyes were, well, let's just say he was blinded in a bar fight south of Chicago. My mother died during childbirth. She was a prostitute and he was her, well, I don't, I don't know what he was. So I was sent off to an orphanage and ran away and fell in with a gang. He was probably, um... My word. What a difficult life you've lived. Uh, the leader of the gang taught me how to read, taught me how to see all that was good in the world. He was a great man in a way. But you killed people. Sure. And I've suffered for it. And that's the life I left, or tried to leave. Ah, uh, said too much, Bonnie. I'm an uneducated killer, sent here to do all I can do well. Kill a man in cold blood so that another man may do his part to cut crime in an area, and a rich man can be elected governor on the back of these promises. Civilization is a truly beautiful thing, Mr. Marston. <laughs> Listen, can you help me? Well, I can try. What do you need, money? No, nothing so complicated. I need an extra hand to take out the herd to pasture. <laughs> sure. Point me in the right direction. So, um, yeah, Marston's father was probably a pimp. That's probably what uh, he was getting at there. And, um, and another thing is, um, uh, when Marston says that nothing is forgiven, there's a lot of foreshadowing in a lot of the dialogue in Red Dead Redemption. Make sure you keep that in mind, nothing is forgiven. understand now why I've been playing my cards somewhat close to my chest. I didn't know you had a wife and child. Then again, I don't think I ever asked. They're, they're lucky to have a man like you. I ain't so sure about that, but thank you. How are you, Miss McFarland? Hey. Well, she didn't say hello to him. That wasn't nice. Come on. The thing about this, like, herding cows, um, I can't imagine how hard this must be. You know, the thing about this is Red Dead Redemption makes it seem so simple, but this is not something that's simple. This is something that's very, very hard to do. And just imagine all the cows going in different directions trying to get all of them, and herds can be much bigger than this. And a lot of times these farmers, when they were like moving out these cattle, like in Red Dead Redemption, it's only they're moving maybe like half a mile. They would have to maybe sometimes even 20, 30 miles with these cattle. Like imagine what that must have been like, how, you know, exhausting that must have been. Is this the mission where the, um, where the thunderstorm starts? I think it, it might be. Keep sweeping behind them! That way they'll stay together! Barney's gonna love this! Move on! Watch Move on! Herd. Stay together, you dumb animals! You're doing great, Mr. Mark! Stay forward! Work. Keep that herd together now! Bad with the herd. Ranch 
teaching might be your true calling, Mr. Marston. Either that, or you were a cow in a past life. Thank you, Miss McFarland. I'll see you later. I have work to do back at the ranch. Come back after 8 a.m. today. Uh, what time is it now? Uh, okay. Hmm. Looks like it's about 725. <laughs> that deal almost ruined me. You bust me by, please. Long as you ain't no shark, How can I refuse? I'm playing with the money that Bonnie just paid us here. Uh, skip here. Share been locking people up for no reason. I'll call that. Call. Somebody. Hello. Queen and a seven. Um. How much do I gotta call here? Let's see. You ain't much fun. I'm gonna take a day off next week. I call. Oh, I'm folding this. Now I'm either lucky or foolish. Okay, let's skip this. Let's see. Hopefully, here we can get a um. I'm busted. Ten and a nine. I'm calling. I may regret this. Would you look at that? Seven, eight. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, I actually might be able to get a straight. Think I'll check. I saw my boss kiss a man. Let's see what we can do with it then. Let's get down to cases. I'm gonna start spinning your chinny, Drummond. Hold your breath. Okay, it's four here. Uh, okay. It's nice to see an old friend. All in. Well, show me the shit then. There we go. I hope I don't bore people with my poker playing here. Um, queen and a six. Okay. No thanks. Oh, I already got a. That's interesting. Okay. For people wondering why I move my head around, is because I see what you guys see. Play directly through OBS. Um. Think I'm gonna call. You only live once. There we go. Okay. Hey, that's Winning my it. money. No worry. I'll be back for more of your money soon enough. And you can play some of the bigger, you know, games later on. I know that. Um Well, hello, Mr. Marston. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Did you meet my father? John Marston, this is my father, Drew McFarland. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Marston. Please. So, my daughter informs me that you're here on some secret mission to uh, remove some undesirables from the county. Notice how John removed his Something hat. I'll talk like about that in a little bit. I'm grateful for the hospitality, sir. Well, you know, we've lived here for 30 years now. Came here from the east. 
The land had never been settled. For 10 years, we fought the Indians, tough men. And we had outlaws, and we had drought, and we had smallpox, terrible winters, cholera. I bury more of my children than I raised. Sorry to hear that, sir. I've seen strong men wither and die under that unforgiving sun. That whole herd of cattle just take sick and die. But I've never once doubted my life here. No, sir. When I hear about this so-called federal government sending out agents to covertly murder and control people, then I start to worry. I mean, yeah, all right, Williamson is a menace. And men like him are the plague. But isn't a government agent a worse menace? And all that symbolizes, I mean. You may be right, sir. Well, you're a brave man. You're always going to be welcome here. But you tell your friends out east that we don't want to live like that out here. And sneaking around and spying and secret missions. Huh? It's preposterous. Trust me, sir. I agree with you. Good. Well, we won't insult you any further. Come on, Bonnie. We got things to do. Mr. Marston, do you want to join us? It's Daddy's favorite pastime. Apart from political discourse, that is. What is? Breaking in horses. Come on. I hear you're a pretty decent rider. For a city dweller, that is. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, notice how John took off his hat when he met, um, her father. Um, uh, that's, in, um, You're gonna need oh, this, this is the mission you get the lasso, too. In a lot of cultures around the world, this is not just in America, but it's, lasso, it's seen as extremely here. disrespectful when you come into somebody's house, house with your hat on. Um, you know, it's not as common today anymore. Uh, people do wear hats in other people's houses a lot of times. But back then, that's not something you do. If you're invited as a guest into somebody's house, like somebody invites you for tea into your ha into their house, you're supposed to take your hat off. That's a sort of sign of respect. And you're not supposed to also eat with your hat on. That's also considered a sign of disrespect. And um, another thing, when like when Drew McFarlane, when he's you talking sure about how they don't like the federal government. The government's doing, sir. They ain't theories, Mr. Marston. I saw the telegram Marshall got from Blackwater. It ain't exactly a state secret who sent you. Well, is he wrong? I saw those men from the train. The government can go to hell if you ask me. Those sons of bitches would steal a coin off a dead man's eyes. Mr. Marston! He's right. Now, I don't know much about politics. Please, Paul, can we just enjoy the ride? I know ride? we're only as free as they say we are. Power's like a drink. The more you have, the more you want. There's few men who can handle it. There's certain things in this country a woman could do much better if you ask me. I ain't gonna argue with that, Miss McFarland. So, um... Here, here's the thing, is that uh, this is what a lot of people a lot of times don't understand about Americans. Um, uh, and this is, they got this pretty accurately here, especially people in the countryside. Uh, uh, let's get the herd. I'll, I'll explain it a little bit, guys, what I mean. It's just what I'm going to explain. It's going to take a few minutes for me to explain. But, um, okay. Okay, coming to help you. Oh no, uh... Try not to spook him too much! God damn it! 
it's all right. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Got it. Okay, there we go. Okay, get letter one. And you know what's what really stupid in Red Dead Online? In Red Dead Online, you can um you can horse break horses, but you can't keep them. You know how stupid that is? That's what Rockstar really they messed up on. Oh, uh. Oh. Yeah. It's it's more the activity isn't even that hard. It's more just trying to tell the angle that John Marston is at when you're trying to get on the horse. Um. Come on. No, uh, what? Oh, come on. I'm sorry, guys. It just. Ah, oh, damn. Damn that 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 horse is getting pretty annoying to uh, to break. I just got on. Oh damn, I'm, I suck at this. I'm, I'm gonna get used to it, guys. It's been so many years since I played this game. Keep a good hold on him. Hold on to him. Oh damn! Whoa! Relax now. Got it, okay. Look at that! Pure and natural! Nice work! I think that'll do it for today. Let's get back to the ranch. Come on! Yeah. I like your father. I'm glad. He's quite a character. You have a good life here. The life I want. For me and my family, I mean. We don't have a lot anymore. You have enough. It's one that gets so many folks in trouble. It'll sap your spirit and make you poor, but it's straight and it's decent. There's no better night's sleep than after an honest day's work. It's no wonder you look so tired then. Some deck must be shy of Joker, Miss McFarland. Who'd have thought you'd be such a natural at busting Broncos? That was fun. I think you could be a fine rancher one day. If you can bear to stop killing people for a living. Sure. Sure. Whoa there. Well done, Mr. Marston. These are fine horses. Hey, Bonnie. Amos was saying some horses been spotted somewhere outside of Armadillo. Let's go, Mr. Marston. We can really do with those horses. No rest for the wicked. Let's see if we can track down that other herd of horses. Come on. You never did tell me why you were never married. Aside from the snobbery, that is. You sure asked a lot. I'm just surprised, that's all. You must have been quite a catch. The fact that you're talking in the past says it all. No, that's not what I mean. You must have had some suitors, that's all I'm saying. Some, I suppose. Here and there, a ranch in the middle of Hennigan's stead ain't really the place to find a husband. Amos, he's a little, well, you know, countryfied. Where'd you get your airs and graces, Miss McFarland? From a couple of cheap governesses Paul hired to save us from being savages. I'd like to talk about more than just cattle and chickens sometimes, that's all. And after my brother left, it was up to me to become the man of the ranch. 
So, um, uh, what else? My wife is kind of like you, Miss McFarland. Is that so? She's always been a woman in a man's world. You don't talk about her very much. It's kind of painful, but she's never far from my thoughts. There's my boys. Come on, Mrs. Marston. Come on. Easy. behind the herd Let's okay Let's drive them up the canyon where it narrows We'll trap them there Whoa the herd towards the canyon, okay. Let's go! Come on, easy up now. Come on! Move it up! No stop! Let's go! No, 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 yeah. not... Yeah, I cannot imagine what this, how hard of a job this must be. Yeah. Like, can you imagine how hard of a job this must have been hurting this, like, and like horses especially, animals that can run away so fast, so quickly? Probably the hardest one to do. Come on. Damn, okay, all this cactus in the way here, too. Damn, almost had it. Man, I'm starting to get annoyed with this one. Come on. Finally, I got it. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Almost got it. Now I'm getting much better at this. Relax. Nearly there. This don't feel too good. That's it. Got it. Okay. Perfect. for your help today, Mr. Marston. We got some fine horses. You know, why don't you keep that stallion as your own, as a thank you from all of us. Thank you, ma'am. He's a fine animal. Yeah. 
Okay. And, um, I guess we'll do- we'll do more of Bonnie's missions. I'd like to have, like, my parts in, like, um, you know, in, into specific, like, sections. Um, but about Bonnie, um, uh, and, you know, her- her dad, Drew, what I was saying is that, uh, it- that was very accurate. Like, a lot of how the people in the countryside, like, rural America, especially back then, it was even more distrustful, the government. And what I was say- what I was trying to say earlier is this is what a lot of people, they don't understand about Americans. Uh, for example, is like, out of all the Western democracies in the world, uh, out of every single Western democracy, uh, Americans hate their government the most. You know, they're more distrustful of their government than the British, the French, you know, the Germans, you know, the Polish, um, you know, Italians. So, out of like, a lot of what, democracies around the world, Americans tend to hate their government the most, and what the reason that people don't what people don't understand about this is that's pretty much what america was founded on america was founded on largely a distrust of the federal government federal power um you know america uh america values states rights a lot and states rights you know one of the core things in america that's why a lot of times you know foreigners are just really shocked that in america that like states have just so many rights like states decide their own gun laws you know states decide their own education you know states decide their own taxes as well you know some states have an income tax some states don't have an uh, income tax at all uh, and so, uh, largely, there's a massive distrust of the federal government, of this federal power just coming in and just trying to ruin your uh, way of life. And people in the countryside, uh, rural places like small towns and farms and stuff like that, they're the most distrustful of the federal government. They really don't trust the federal government. And so, like, that's a core of this game. You'll see a lot of Americans that just really don't like the federal government, don't trust the federal government. And there's also a lot of things the federal government does that gives you a good reason not to trust them, especially see some of the things that the government does in this game later on. Uh, you're gonna understand why the, a lot of people just in the West, especially, do not like the um, uh, the federal government. Come on, come on, let's go! Hey, Get him in there! Come on, come on! Hey, miss. Hey, miss. I got most of the horses secure, and the chickens. Well, thank you, Amos, but it's the herd I'm worried about. I know, they're scattered all over the valley and beyond. The weather is coming in real fast. So what do you suggest, Amos? We leave the herd out there to be scattered by the storm and ourselves left here to die without a livelihood? Can I help? No, miss. If the men get caught out in that storm, they're gonna die. And if we lose our herd, we'll all die, you stupid man. Doesn't sound like we're left with much of a choice then. Come on, Amos. Round up your men, let's get the herd. Dang. Much time. That sky don't look good. I'm starting to think somebody up there is conspiring against me. Are you a religious man? Not in any real sense. Sometimes I tell myself things happen for a reason. Like what brought me here was fate come a calling. But nobody made my path but me. We all need to look for answers somewhere. Some in big old books. Others in big old bottles of whiskey. Believing in some kind of divine purpose ain't gonna give me my wife and kid back. Past is who we are, Miss McFarland. There ain't no changing that. Faith is a luxury I can't afford. Stay with me. Storm's closing in. Yeah, so this is getting the mission with the thunderstorm now, remember this. I think we can handle that. The cows get real ornery in bad weather. It's more work, but I'll show you how to deal with them. I'm gonna save my voice for the herd. It's gonna be hard shouting over this storm. For people wondering how could the the they possibly die in a storm, um, uh, places like this, like Red Dead Redemption, it's not that far from like uh, you know from like town to town, but in like in the Wild West back then. Like, you could have it, like, you know, 50 miles or so to the nearest town. And so, what happens is, you know, you didn't have things like GPS, and there's like a, um... You didn't have things like GPS, and there might be like a really bad, like, thunderstorm. What happens is, you know, lightning strikes, your horse gets scared, knocks you off your horse, you get hurt, your horse runs off. Now you're basically trapped in the middle of nowhere when there's like a really bad storm coming in. You don't know exactly where you are. Other animals could attack you. Um, you, know, you. You might get lost. You might starve. So things like that could very much happen. That's why. 
round up the straggler oh, in here. Okay. wondering, would cows actually run off the cliff? Yes, they would. Um, in a massive panic like this, the cows wouldn't realize where they're going. A lot of animals get really scared of bad weather, like they can tell when bad weather is coming and they'll get really scared of that. Um... Stop, stop! No, you idiots! Oh my god. Yep, well, we had an incident there. Okay. So as even though this seems like hard, this is like ten times harder in real life than what it is in Red Dead Redemption. Just imagine how hard this must be in real life, especially in like a storm. That's why I say farming is like one of the hardest jobs ever. I don't think a lot of people realize just how hard farmers have it a lot of times. And a lot of times farmers are not very rich people either. You know, when you have like the mega giant farms, yes, those farmers are rich people. But, you know, you have people like, you know, Bonnie and, um, you know, Drew, like, you know, they live comfortably well, you know, they have some workers, you know, I would say they're probably upper middle class, but I wouldn't say that they're necessarily rich, uh, not at least for that time period. There. You might make a decent rancher one day. Thank you, Miss McFarlane. A lot of times uh, what people look at is people look at like a big house that farmers have and they're like, oh, that guy's rich. 
but they don't realize is how much they have to work the land, just all the stuff that they have to do. Uh, have to get up like 4 o'clock in the morning, work the entire day. And a lot of times, they don't even have weekends off, so that's like, yeah. Yeah, so I guess we'll probably wrap it up here, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this part. We played this entire part without killing anybody. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys. Thank <laughs> you.